Aid is a charity and not-for-profit organization, and today's performance is part of our commitment to bring you free performances every day. This is made possible by our sponsors, donors, and funders. You can help us too by making a donation at the donation box behind you. Please feel free to take photographs and short videos of the performance. Do hashtag Espanade and MyDurian. Enjoy the show. Hello, everyone. I'm Inj. And I'm Lee Sing. Hi, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for being part of this. It means a lot to all of us. So, this is our first story. Yeah. and I'm retelling it on behalf of somebody who told it to me. who left food for us but it was never enough One day, my mother went to run some errands and never returned. She had been in a hit and run. But the laws were not developed and cared very little for citizens like us, so the driver never paid. My mother became a faded memory. And I became an orphan. I wandered the streets by myself, begging for food. People avoided me like plague, for I was filthy, scrawny, ugly. I was sad and lost without my mother, and tried to make sense of my life. I didn't ask for this hardship, and it wasn't fair. But deep down, 
I knew how much love I still had, so I sought out people who would let me share. Some occasionally let me into their lives out of pity, but none stayed. One day, I chanced upon the wrong person and was beaten up for fun, and then left to die in a dark corner of a street. to death. Someone loaded me into a vehicle and I was brought to an orphanage where I recovered. There, I fought hard and often with other children. We fought for food and toys. There were never enough beds, so we fought for those too. The weakest of us always slept on the cold hard floor. Most importantly, we fought to find a home, a family that would love us like their own. When people came to look at us, we fought for their attention. I always put on my best behaviour, but time after time, only the best-looking children were picked, even if they weren't the most well-behaved, even if they didn't seem to have as much love to give. I never understood this. I wasn't difficult, and I never threw tantrums. Despite the fights, I tried my best to be friends with the other children and shared my food when I could. I also looked out for the smaller, weaker ones. The orphanage staff had nothing but good things to say about me, yet I was never given a chance to prove myself to the visitors. Perhaps it was the scars on my face and body. Perhaps it was my dark coloured skin. Perhaps people were just not ready to give someone like me a home. Hello world, I'm a mismatched glove on the shelf of a hardware store. It's not like I know how I got here from before. Time just took me on its time Hello world, I'm part of the world but I don't qualify to be Part of society's social hierarchy Cause I was always cruising on my own But 
I stayed hopeful and continued to wait for a home. Years passed and I grew older and quieter. I fought less and slept more. I still put on my best behaviour for visitors and tried to show them the love I had to offer, but by now, nobody wanted someone my age. They wanted babies and the younger children. I often thought about my mother and how she would hold me close to her soft, warm body. I missed my mother. My health deteriorated and the orphanage tried their best to find me a home so I could recuperate in peace. And still, nobody opened their hearts to me. I was truly alone now and it was time to go home to my mother. I took my last breath and when I opened my eyes again, I was standing on a bridge and my mother was waiting for me at the end of it. I ran up to her and she nuzzled me with a snout, her tail wagging furiously. I was glad to be in her embrace again. I looked behind her and there were all the other dogs who had died before me. Lonely, homeless, abused, unloved. But there was no sorrow here, only happiness and love. We were all together now and we could never be hurt or overlooked again. This is a true story, and I'm telling it in, um, on behalf of somebody who told it to me. I was born with a body as black as a cloudless sky at midnight. My eyes shimmer like stars that covered it. I enjoyed stalking my shadow and blending into the night. This scared people, so they kept their distance and told me to learn my boundaries. Learn your boundaries. Learn my boundaries. Learn your boundaries. Learn my boundaries. I was unapologetic and nothing held me back. I found my way into people's houses and made myself at home. And the further they ran from me, the closer I moved to them, sending them scurrying away in superstitious panic. Superstitious panic. Don't judge me by the way I look. Judge me by the way I look You don't know what it means to be like me Black like a cloudless sky Don't you dare Judge me by the way I look I'm just mysterious Superstitious, mysterious. Mostly, they left me alone, afraid that I would bring them bad luck or be cursed with my ghost forever. I was addicted to their fear. It, it tickled me and made me feel mm, powerful. <laughs> 
People called it complacency. But I had nine lives after all. Nine lives? Nine lives. Nine lives? Nine lives. Nine lives? Nine lives. Nine lives? Nine lives? Nine lives? Nine lives. Nine lives? Nine lives. See, good, we can count to nine. One night, I sat in the middle of the row and marveled at the squares of lights in the buildings ahead of me. They looked like crystals scattered across the sky. I raised my hands towards the buildings and imagined catching one. Perhaps, 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 perhaps I would live in one of these little squares one day. Hmm. How nice. But before that dream was over, I heard a car screeching behind me, and I was on the ground, struggling to catch my breath, pain coursing through my brains. Somebody stepped out of the car, mumbling disgruntledly. I screamed and yelled and beseeched it to help me. It grumbled some more and drove away. The nerve. The nerve. The nerve. The nerve. Was I not afraid of my ghost? Was it not afraid of my ghost? Years of bad luck ahead of him. The lights of the back of the car became one of the sky. And I slowly drifted into sleep. Deep, deep. Sleep. When I was awake, a face peered down at me. Familiar. Unfamiliar, sorry. But smiling. Kind. <laughs> I never thought of people as kind. It watched me day and night and spoke to me softly. Sometimes I refused food and swatted angrily at its hand. It never retaliated, and its face remained kind. When I learned to walk again, it started celebrating. Oh, smart girl. With every I'm so step proud of you. strange, joyous sounds, unlike the others that people used to make to chase me away. I recovered and waited to be sent back into the night. But by now, I had grown fond of the sun. That be sunbeams that make their way into the house, creating diamonds on the floor and walls and the face that kept its watch over me as the moon once did. So, I named it my human and made myself comfortable, grudgingly. I accepted the food my human offered me and sometimes found myself watching it as it busied itself around me. If it caught me watching her, it giggled and I would stalk off, embarrassed. But I might actually, like my human, it definitely loves me, worships me like the god I knew I was. In moments like these, my body softened and purred and I would continue to sit proudly on its lap. My throne. But my human friends thought of my human's friends, thought less of me, shunning me, but it would fiercely defend me as if one would when their faith was attacked. I didn't like it when friend, of any light of their friends, for they reminded me of the people that had always, almost killed me. In my eyes, they were all responsible and I regarded them with contempt. Don't you touch me, I don't like your face. Something about your face that I don't like. You're fat. My human understood this, yet it puzzled me while it defended me. It also coaxed me into forgiving them, and it promised that together we could change people. Reluctantly, I held on to this belief, and it became a fragile little hope. Perhaps one day, people would learn to see me more than being a black cat. 
that I'm a mighty being not defined by my very color that blinds them. That despite their callousness and the way they had chosen to dictate my life, I am proud of who I am. And I, I guess, I guess I forgive them. Do you really? Maybe. Thank you very much.